Hello and good morning, CTS 266, Section 840 students for the Spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP Switch course from Cisco Networking Academy, and today's video tutorial is going to be on Lab 6-3, where we're going to be configuring on actual Cisco hardware the Gateway Load Balancing Protocol. Again, another proprietary solution from Cisco for first hop redundancy. Now remember that the reason that GLBP differs from HSRP is that GLBP is going to provide uh, true load balancing in the sense that uh, it's going to be a round robin fashion. Whereas with HSRP or VRRP, what we had to do was we had to configure uh, multiple HSRP groups, one group per VLAN, uh, in order to get the VLANs to balance across the links that we had. Now, quick note, at the end of the lab in, uh, lab 6-2, it says to go ahead and wipe your configurations clean. Uh, now, you do not have to do that. Uh, what you can do is just simply wipe out all of the HSRP v6 information with a no standby 99, no standby version 2, no standby 100, no standby version 2 under the interface, the SVIs. To clean that information up, we're going to convert router 1 and router 3's connections to router on a stick, and then DLSW1 and 2, those are simply going to change to um, trunk ports so that we have uh, a router on the stick set up and we're going to be doing some sub interfaces. So what we're going to do now is we're actually all of the sort of addressing information, this has already been configured. Uh, so we are at step 11. Again, uh, we want to focus on GLBP and not so much typing in uh, trunk port statements and uh, SVI uh, IP addresses. So everything's been IP'd and we are ready to go. So one of the key things to remember with GLBP is that GLBP is going to have act an an active virtual gateway. So there'll be a single active virtual gateway. And remember we talked about this in the discovery activity that the active virtual gateway uh, is going to be functioning similar to uh, what you would think of as like a proxy, right? So the active virtual gateway is going to receive um, all of the ARP requests for uh, the default gateway. Uh, from the host. So server one, server, or I should say PC B and PC C uh, that we have over here, uh, when they're sending ARP requests, they're going to be going to whomever happens to be the active virtual gateway. So if this was our active virtual gateway, right, you can see here it's going to be the active virtual gateway that initially router one is going to receive all ARP requests for the default gateway. But this is where GLBP differs from HSRP and VRRP. So router one, if he was to receive the first ARP request, he will become the active virtual forwarder and he will assume the duties of taking all the traffic from that first client, whoever it might be. So let's say server one went first, then all of his traffic is going to pull to router one because the active virtual forwarder is going to be running here. Now, if it's round robin, if PC2 is the second host that sends traffic, the initial ARP request, we'll draw a terrible dotted line here, the initial ARP request comes over to the active virtual gateway. It's then that the active virtual gateway gives back to PCC the virtual MAC address, or the VMAC, for router three and then router three will be responsible for all the traffic that's being generated from PCC. And then when we have PCB come online, the third client who comes online, his ARP will still go to the active virtual gateway. Again, the active virtual gateway is the proxy for all ARP requests for that default gateway. He will then give back to PCB a virtual Mac that again belongs to router one. If we had a fourth client over here, he would end up here. The fifth client, again, typical round robin, ends up here. And this is how the gateway load balancing protocol works. 
Again, there is a single active virtual gateway that gets elected based off of the priority. So think of the AVG as the HSRP active node or the VRRP virtual master. That is what the active virtual gateway is and it's elected in the same way with that priority command. And then you can have up to four active virtual forwarders at any given time. And remember, the active virtual gateway is an active virtual forwarder. Okay, so let's go ahead after that quick review there. Let's go ahead and clear the screen here. And we are again, uh, whoops, sorry, we are again on step 11. So we're going to be setting the routers up here uh, for the gateway load balancing protocol. So let's go ahead and it's going to be on the routers this time. We're not doing it on the multi-layer switches. We're doing it on the router. So basically we've got our access, our distro, and then our core up here with the routers. All right, so let's hop onto the command line here. Let's get on to, actually not DLSW1, sorry about that. Let's get onto router one here. We'll go from user exec to privilege exec into global config. If I were to say do show run, let's take a look at what fast ethernet interface 00 looks like. You can see I left the IPv6 information there on the main interface because uh, it's not gonna hurt anything because we're basically, think of it as sort of a dual stack where these two protocols, IPv4 and IPv6, are gonna be running independently of each other on these routers. Uh, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go into interface uh, FA00.10 and we're gonna set up GLBP. So GLBP 10, that's our group number. We're just matching it to the VLAN. And what is the IP address that we're gonna use? Well, we're gonna use 10.1.10.254. Now that's gonna be the virtual IP. So before I hit enter, let's take a look. We've got the MacBook is back in action here. Uh, and as you can see, we've got the IP address set up as 10.1.10.101. Now, the MacBook is plugged into the access layer switch right now. So where this currently sits is right here. So think of it as PCB right now. You'll notice that they all go into VLAN 10. So all I'm going to be doing is moving his connection around uh, into the different switches. So you can see that it's set up as PCB right now. And so let's see what happens here uh, when we kick off this command. GLBP 10 IP 10.1.10.254, whoops, and let's bring this back here. Let's see, does anything happen? Do we have any connectivity at all? So we still don't have any connectivity, even though I'm set up right here to use that IP address as my default gateway. So no connectivity, and there, whoops, there we go. We went from speak to active. So now I'm up and active as the GLBP um, active virtual gateway. Let's go ahead and put our priority in here. So GLBP 10 uh, and we're going to say the priority is going to be 200 because we want this to be the active virtual gateway. GLBP 10 preempt because remember by default for the active virtual gateway preemption is off by default. There's a little subtlety here Remember that by default for the active virtual forwarders, the AVFs, preemption is on by default, right? Okay, uh, so that takes care of VLAN 10. Let's go into interface gigabit ethernet zero, I'm sorry, FA 0.0.20. And we're gonna do the same thing. So GLBP 20 IP is 10.1.20.254. Uh, the GLBP 20 priority is going to be 200, so we're going to be the AVG for uh, uh, VLAN 20 as well. And then GLBP 20 preempt. And again, uh, we could do the delay minimum 270, uh, reload 270, and actually, what is it? Minimum 270, and that's actually it. They don't have it on the reload, so we can do minimum 270. Uh, for the GLBP group 20. All right, and we've got our preempt command in there. And then last but not least, VLAN 99. So interface FA0 slash 0.99. And we're gonna say GLBP 
<clears throat> excuse me, 99 IP 10.1.99.254, and then GLBP 99 preempt, and then GLBP 99 priority is going to be 200. So again, router one is going to be the active virtual gateway for all three VLANs uh, that we have configured. So what we need to do now, uh, now that we've done this on router one, uh, we need to go to router three, who is going to be the uh, standby uh, active virtual gateway, and he's going to be active virtual forwarder two. And so we're going to go ahead and run similar commands uh, over on router three. All right, so here we go. So let's go into global config. Let's say do show run. Let's see how we're set up over here on this side. So you can see there are the three VLANs and there are the IPs. I changed this one here to two. Uh, typically, I like to use the last octet as the router number, but we had to change it here because that is actually assigned 10.199.3 is assigned to DLSW01. So, but not going to change anything here. So let's go into interface. Whoops. FA00.10. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to say GLBP10. IP is 10.1.10.254. Uh, GLBP 10 priority, we're going to set it to 150, and GLBP 10 preempt. All right, so that takes care of uh, VLAN 10 and GLBP group 10. Let's do a do show GLBP brief. And so there we go, right? We get a lot of good information here. We see three lines, and it's easier to look at this here in these three lines, where you can see... Uh, that we're in the listen state if we run it again. You can see that we're in the standby state, but we've got this third line down here. Don't be fooled uh, by the fact that we're seeing three lines. Let me highlight these. When we look at these three lines, right, remember uh, that the first line, this is the active virtual gateway status, right? So for group 10, uh, we are not forwarding, right? because our priority is 150, we are in the standby state for that address. The active router is 10.1.10.1. So not us. So who is the standby router? Local, that is us. Now again, this first line is talking about the active virtual gateway status. When we look at these two lines here on the bottom, right, we're talking about the active virtual forward status, which is why, again, we're not the active virtual forwarder here. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. This is for the AVG line. So active virtual forwarder one, we're listening, and that's the MAC, but it's because we're listening because it belongs to router one. So we need to listen because if router one goes away, then we're going to take over this MAC address, the responsibilities for that MAC. But active virtual forwarder two, Right, The state is active here, and we, the local router, are the owner of this MAC address, or we will be responding to requests when the active virtual gateway says to a host, hey, go to that MAC address. That traffic is then going to come to this local router in GLBP group 10 that belongs to router, whoops, router 3. All right, so that's a good look there at the GLBP output. So we've got uh, VLAN 10 taken care of. Let's get an interface FA00.20, and let's finish up here. So GLBP uh, 20 IP 10.1.20.254, GLBP 20 preempt, GLBP 20 priority will be 150 interface FA00.99. And we're going to say GLBP 99 IP 10.1.99.254, GLBP 99 preempt, GLBP uh, 99 priority is going to be 150. Again, we're going to be the standby for all of the groups. And, the, and again, commands were identical here on router 3 as they were on router 1, only difference being 
uh, that we changed the priority. All right, so router one is going to be active. Let's save our configuration here to make sure we don't lose anything. And again, these are just Cisco uh, 1841s. As you can see here, I'm running 1533 XB12 on all three of these routers. So definitely a, a recent version of code. Far more recent than the switches, which are 12255 SE10. All right, so now let's go ahead and say show GLBP. And let's see what we see here for group 10. Let's see if I can get it all in here. Well, we're going to be close, so I'll stop right here. So let's see what we've got here in our GLBP, our show GLBP output. You can see that state is active. Now remember, right up until here, all of this is our active virtual gateway information. When we get down here, it's kind of obvious that it says forwarder. So now we're talking about active virtual forwarder one. And then you can see we have forwarder two. If we had four of these, we would have one, two, three, and four. And this is active virtual forwarder two. So let's take a look at the active virtual gateway, right? Because we are the active. That is the virtual IP address, 10.1.10.254. Take a look at the hello time and the hold time. Those should look familiar. Right? These are the defaults for HSRP as well as GLBP. Uh, the redirect and the forward timeout, we'll come back to those, uh, remembering that those have to do uh, with how soon it would flush out and stop using uh, old entries. So preemption is enabled, again, because we type that in. No delay here on uh, group 10. When we go down further, we should see that there's a delay for group 20. So who is the active? Well, the active is the local router. In other words, router one. Standby. Who is my standby? Well, it's 10.1.10.3. That's router three. He's a standby with a priority of 150. Now, my priority is configured at 200. The weighting is 100. The default is 100. And this goes into the load balancing, right? So load balancing right now, what are we doing? We're doing round robin. And that is the default for GLBP. The other two were, um, you could do a weighted uh, round, or not a weighted round, Robin. You could do a weighting, like if you wanted to say, like if we had router one here and router three here, if I wanted five, for every five requests that come here, uh, I only want one request to come here, we could set it up like that, right? And that's what the, uh, the weighting is. Um, and then group members. So here are the two group members, right? These are the MAC addresses for router one and router three. And there are two forwarders, one of whom is active, right? So forwarder one, state is active. We've got a single state change. Here is the MAC address, right? And remember, that is the group, the GLBP group number, and that is the active virtual forwarder number. And it says, who is the owner? Well, this should look familiar. We look at this 001F, 6 Charlie Fox Delta, 3 Charlie Alpha 2. The owner is router 1. And redirection is enabled. Preemption is enabled. And again, remember, this is by default. Minimum delay of 30 seconds. The active is the local router. The weighting is 100 by default. And client selection count is set to 15. All right, so that's a quick look at the show GLBP output, and we're able to really verify. If I come down here, let's take a look. We we're looking for uh, the delay. Yeah, right here for group 20. Minimum delay is 270. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got that set up uh, to the Cisco best practice standing. So now we're going to see a little more output here. When Whoops, we don't want to quit out. When we type show GLBP, brief. Because remember, for each group, we're going to see three lines, at least in our configuration, we're going to see three lines. We're going to see the AVG line, which is the first line, followed by the active virtual forwarder lines, which are the last two. And we see this for each of the groups. All right, so we, we run into a question here where it says which router is the active forwarder uh, MAC address for 6302. Well, if we take a look here, 6302, who is the active virtual forwarder in VLAN 99? 
the active router is 101992. So it's router three. Remember, for VLAN 99, I had to make it uh, dot two here. And then the question of what MAC address is the active forwarder for GLBP group 99 listening? Well, it's listening, right? Or actually, let me make sure I reread that. What MAC address is the active forwarder for GLBP group 99 listening? And it's clearly listening here for 6302, but I don't think that's what it's asking. That's an oddly worded question. What MAC address is the active forwarder for GLBP group 99 listening? Oh, sorry, the active forwarder right here. My apologies. I was looking, I was read the word listen and I looked down here. So the active virtual forwarder is, is right now it's AVF1, right, for group 99. And that's the local router, and it's listening on 6301. So MAC address 6301. Yeah, that was a very oddly worded question. All right, so now we're on to step number 12. It says verify PCs can reach the router to loopback using the GLBP gateway. Uh, and so we've got the MacBook configured over here. Uh, we would just simply have to change his IP and move him uh, to a different port. So let's go ahead and they're looking to do this from server one. Let's see here, the output of the ARP cache. Let me make sure that we're doing this in the right order here. All right, so they want us to do it as if it was server one. And let's take a look at our diagram here. So server one is going to be VLAN 10 in FA 106, at least my 106, on DLS W01. So let's check DLS W01 out here. And let's go into privilege exec and say show run in FA106. So we are access VLAN 10. Uh, we've got spanning tree port fast on and it is an access port. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's go ahead and give me a second here. I need to relocate the connection so that this ends up in DLS W01. So I'm going to move the connection. I'll be right back. All right, so we've got uh, the MacBook plugged into DLS W01 here. So log me out. So if I were to say uh, show run interface FA 106, that is how we're set up. So let's see, uh, can we ping our gateway here? So let me come over to, let's see, can we ping 10.1.10.254? So absolutely we can ping, <clears throat> excuse me, we can ping uh, the virtual IP address, right, that's being uh, used by router one and router three. So the next question becomes, uh, if I were to say ARP-A, let's see what MAC address does it show for 10.1.10.254. Now you can see it kind of got rid of the characters, uh, the, the extra zeros here, but Baker 4, so there it is, A, right being for group 10 and who is responding so it's two right in other words zero two so active virtual forwarder two so on this router if i were to say trace route to 10.1.10.254 you see how we would go to 10.1.10.3 so we're actually jumping over to router one I'm sorry, router three, and then coming back over, <clears throat> excuse me, coming back over uh, to router one. So active virtual forwarder uh, two is who is responding to us. And we can tell that uh, based off the MAC address, even though it's not in too uh, convenient of a format here, they do drop out some of the unneeded zeros, uh, but that's okay. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and make sure here that, so now we're going to move to PCB. So now let me move this connection uh, on the MacBook. I'm going to swing it into ALSW01, uh, and we're going to see what PCB output we receive. So let me pause real quickly here. All right, you can see that interface 106 went down on DLSW01. If we come over here to ALSW01, we can see that we've got connectivity. 
So now let's come back to the MacBook and let's see, can we ping 10.1.10.254? And absolutely, so we can ping that virtual gateway address. So now let's say control C and ARP A, and let's see what we see for 10.10.254. And so again, it looks like the answer is coming from, or I'm, we're being sent to uh, the active virtual forwarder uh, two, who is going to be router three. Uh, and that is the Mac address that we're seeing there. Now, um, I'm using the same MacBook, so it is possible uh, that this is caching the information. Uh, and so you're, when you're using different PCs, as we will be in class this evening, your mileage may vary. Uh, and so we'll see right here. I'm getting ready to move it into uh, DLSW02, uh, which is where we should be seeing uh, something different. We should see it be going, it should be going to a different router. Uh, but again, if it's caching uh, this information, it's possible that that's, and let me, I'll run the ARP command before we do uh, the ping command here for PCC. So let me pause, I'm gonna swing it over into DLSW02. All right, so we're back up here and let's just say ARP-A and all right, fantastic. So it did rotate, excellent. All right, so you can see here that it changed and now uh, when we're plugged in over on DLSW02, who is responding? It's gonna be the active virtual forwarder one and that's gonna be uh, router one. So if I were to go on to router one and say show GLBP brief, uh, you can see that for group 10, I am active, that's the local router, and that is the MAC address. So it's going to be 7.baker4.a.1. And is that what we saw over here? Uh, it is. So 07baker40a1. Just representing the MAC addresses a little differently here on a uh, MacBook uh, than it does on a Windows box. And as you can see, a little different than uh, what it is over here on the router. So, but again, we've got success. And so what we've seen is is that the active virtual gateway, when he's receiving the ARP requests for the default gateway, is going to dish them out in a round robin fashion. And so we're good to go here. Let me see. Yeah, and in terms of the waiting, again, we can do simply round robin, we can do host dependent, or we could do weighted with our load balancing, right? So we can do host dependent, weighted or round robin um, and we're doing round robin because that's our default so now what we're going to do is we're going to configure interface tracking let me see here can we ping i know that ultimately 10.1. is it 201.1 okay so that is the address uh that is right here we're learning it via eigrp i gotta exit out the bottom there we're learning it via EIGRP, and this is the address that is all the way up here, kind of simulating the internet off of router two, off of our core. So do we have reachability? Absolutely we do. Let's configure some interface tracking, uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and manipulate things, uh, bring an interface down, uh, and see what happens. So. Uh, Router 1's serial interface and Router 3's serial interface. What do they want us to track here? So we're going to do, we're going to track things on Router 1. And this is actually fortuitous, right? Because when the MacBook is ARPing out, right, who is he using for his default gateway? Well, he's using Router 1. And that is actually the router that we're going to set up the interface tracking on. So I'm going to say track. Uh, and this is for VLAN 10, so I'm going to say track 10 interface serial 000, and that's the serial interface that takes me to router 2, and we're going to track the line protocol. So if it's up or down, uh, it's going to depend on whether or not we're going to decrement things. Okay, so on router 1, we're going to get into sub-interface mode here, interface FA00.10. Let's see what we have here. Do show run interface FA00.10. So that's our configuration right now. And so here's what we're gonna do. 
uh, we're going to configure GLBP with a weight of 110 and a lower threshold of 85 and an upper threshold of 105. So when the weight falls below the specified lower threshold, uh, the router one active virtual forwarder is going to be forced to relinquish its role uh, for that active MAC address assigned to it. In other words, the uh, 0A01. Uh, it's going to be forced to relinquish that. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and set the weighting to track the status. And then we're going to change this a little bit here because we're using a weight of... They had to set it to 110. We used 200. Uh, and so that's okay. If the line protocol state changes, the weight configured for 110 is going to be decreased or decremented by the value that we provide. So let's go ahead and set this up. So GLBP 10, and so the weighting, the first weighting, right, we had set it to uh, 110. We're going to set this to 200. I'm going to set the lower to 185 and the upper to 205. And actually, no, we want to do that. 205, we set to 200. So we'll say lower if, well, we'll go lower 150, actually. So we'll say lower 150 and then the upper uh, to 185. And then we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to say waiting track. Now we're tracking object 10. And if anything goes wrong, if it goes up or down, we're going to decrement. So, whoops, sorry about that. So again, this is what this is saying is we're tracking object 10. Object 10, we just created right up here, right? Which is this line protocol tracking object for serial 000. If it goes down, we're gonna decrement by 51, which would drop us to a lower of 149, which means we're below the lower setting. If it comes back up, then it's going to be incremented by 51, pushing us above the upper threshold. And so then it would bring it back online. So let's clear the screen here. Whoops, let's clear the screen here. So my decrement is going to be 51, which would take us uh, down below our lower setting. All right, so... Uh, the PC here. Let me make sure we've got the right PC. So we're doing server one is what they want us to do, but I think we may stay right where we're at. Yeah, we're going to stay right where we're at with PCC as kind of who we're uh, emulating right now. We're plugged into DLSWO2 because we're set up, we're going to router one. All right, so let's go ahead. We've got the continuous ping kicked off over here, right? So let's go ahead and down the interface, interface serial 000, and let's say do show run interface serial zero, oops, sorry, zero, zero, zero. Uh, and we're simply gonna shut this interface down and we should see that router three is going to pick up four. Well, we should see that the interface is gonna go down. You can see right there, the tracking state picked it up immediately. Went from up to down so it's going to get decremented, but what about our pings? Take a look at that. Everything still going along just fine. No issues at all. So let's do a control C here, and let's see if I say ARP-A, what do you think we're going to see? Well, here is the default gateway address. Take a look at the change here, right? The change shows that we're no longer going through a one, we're now going through a two. Uh, so the active virtual forwarding state has definitely changed. Let's check on router one here and say do show GLBP. And here is group 10. And you can see forwarder state is listen, state is listen, right? Because again, what happened was uh, that the active virtual forwarder priority has dropped. And let's come over here to router three and make sure that this is doing what we expect it to do. So show GLBP brief.
and this is active for both, right? So you can see right here, active virtual forwarder one and two, that router three is active for both of these, right? Because router one, we've decremented the priority and do show GL, whoops, GLBP brief. Over here, it is simply in the listen state. Right. So again, we've tweaked the active virtual forwarder uh, priority so that it rolled over when we decremented. And now we have router three. I'm sorry. Router three is going to be responding for both active virtual forwarder one and active virtual forwarder two. And again, he was router three was active virtual forwarder uh, four two. Because take a look here right? We only did the tracking inside group 10. Group 20, we're fine, right? This active virtual gateway is still up and active for group 20 and group 99. And the active virtual forwarder uh, is also active. So now let's go ahead and come back over to, or we're we'll actually in here, let's say no shut. So we're going to bring that interface back up. We're going to see that the priority We'll go back to what it was configured for, and let's take a look at our pings. Whoops, we actually stopped our pings. Let's ping again, and there we go. So we still have connectivity, right? Let's do a control C here, and let's say ARP A, and has anything changed? No, nothing's changed. We're still going to router three, and you can see that we've got a new adjacency is up, and let's do this here. Let's save what we've got so far. Make sure we don't lose anything. And now let's come back and say show GLBP brief. And you can see that what it did was it tweaked and brought back up the priority value uh, to take back over as the active for 0 alpha 0 1. All right. So that's how uh, router 1 has resumed the active role for the gateway load balancing protocol for GLBP group number 10. So very simple to track those interfaces. Now, the last thing that we're gonna do here, I believe, uh, is we're gonna set up authentication, something we didn't do in the HSRP v6 lab, but that you could easily do here. So, and we'll just do it for interface FA00.10, for VLAN 10, which we seem to be working with quite a bit. So we're gonna say GLBP 10, authentication MD5, key string, I'm just going to say ABC123. Now, as soon as I set authentication up here, you'll notice that we're going to receive an error telling us bad authentication received from 10113, that's router 3, for GLBP group 10. Now, take a look at what happens here. We go from the listen state into the active state. So if I were to say show GLBP, ah, GLBP brief, and I just simply want to see... Um, and I was wondering, you can't do it by group. Let me see if we can say show GLBP, if it would let me put in 10 brief. No, so we're not gonna be able to do that in it. Yeah, I thought it would give us, let's do detail. Show GLBP detail. And I thought there was a way to trim it down just to the individual group. All right, so the detail looks like it's gonna give us much of the same output here. So, but you can see is the active virtual forwarder, I'm sorry, is the active virtual gateway, uh, our state is active. We're also active for group, or for active virtual forwarder one, as well as two. Now let's see what router three thinks about that. You can see he's receiving bad authentication, but what happened as soon as we did the authentication piece, Router 3 transitioned into the active state as well. So what has this done, if anything, to the pings? So you can see that we're still getting responses, right? And this is still successfully working. But what we have going on right now is show GLBP brief. 
is that for group 10, Router 3 thinks that he's active. He thinks he's the active virtual gateway as well as the active virtual forwarder for both AF, AVF 1 and 2. When we look at router 1, what does he think? Show GLBP brief. He also thinks that he is the active virtual gateway and the active virtual forwarder for both AVF 1 and 2. And so what we have now is what I refer to as split brain, where both of these uh, routers believe that they are the true active virtual gateway and active virtual forwarder. So let's come over to DLS W1 and take a look at the side effect of this split brain scenario. And this is exactly what you're going to see is we have the Mac flap notification because again, they both think that they're the active. So here on DLSW1, you can see that the host, it's going back and forth. It's saying, uh, no, zero alpha zero one is, is the Mac for VLAN 10's default uh, gateway address. And then it says, no, 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 it's zero alpha zero two out port channel 21, which is between the distribution layer switches. If I come over here to DLSW2, we're gonna see the same thing, right? We've got this port flapping that's gonna go back and forth because both of the routers are fighting uh, as if they were the active virtual gateway and the active virtual forwarders for both of the AVFs, one and two. So this is exactly what's gonna happen. And using the authentication is a great way to simulate this to see, oh, well, what happens if they come up, come up in sort of this split brain uh, type of activity. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and fix it actually and get rid of that. Uh, let's go into global config here on router three and interface FA00.10, where we're gonna say GLBP 10 authentication MD5 uh, key string ABC123. And so this should fix that and we should see that the flapping uh, is also going to stop. So we'll put some spaces in here and let's see, does that take care of the flapping? Looks like it does, right? We look good. Do we get a message here telling us, yep, we got a new adjacency uh, is up. Everything looks good. So actually, I'm sorry, on router three, uh, we've got our state went from speak and then from active to listen. So if I were to say show GLBP uh, brief, we should see now that we are in the listen state because we are the standby right? We're no longer active. We're the standby. We're listening to active virtual forwarder one, which is router one, and we're active for AVF two. If I come back over to router one here, you can see that we moved into the listen state for AVF forwarder two. So show GLBP brief. And there we go. Everything has been sorted out. But again, that split brain is uh, possible and you'll you'll see it, the symptom will be that Mac flapping uh, on our distro layer switches. All right, well, this wraps up lab 6-3, where we talked about GLBP. Uh, we went over quite a bit of information and you guys will be doing this lab this evening. All right, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you tonight.